Yo, Ralph Bear here. Tell me this, do you miss Cover Art Fail? Welcome to Cover Art Fail! Yeah, that series of YouTube videos created by Blee427, always now known today as The Game Anthropologist, where the series concept is about cover art that fails. <laughs> Don't be too smart ass. But anyway, at the time, his video series is quite unique, as he reviews cover arts, but more specifically, gaming cover arts, where he points out the massive flaws and compares to what works on more better cover arts. From your Mega Man, to your Striders, and... <laughs> yeah, he did it all. Forming like 14 episodes, with one of the episodes being split into two parts, but later formed into one whole episode added together. It's quite the bummer, really, that a funny and informative guy like him had to put this on hold for his more recurring series, and understandably, with one he has more passion for than the other. And even if you don't believe in a concept of reviewing simply cover art and dot dot dot, that's it. I wish he continued the series as more and more cover arts nowadays have most of them ranging from being pretty samey to. <laughs> So, as a tribute to the guy, I'll review not only just gaming covers, but... I want to also review good and or bad movies and combo covers as well, since I felt that the latter are more my forte, and I need more of a sense of variety for this other spin-off for the Stupid Movie Reviews series of videos. And to start off said series of videos, we'll review this cover art. Released for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox F*** YOU UP DEATH, this was the first 7th gen game published by Atlas, a gaming company known for the Megami Tensei and their spin-off the Persona game series. Atlas will later on be bought by Sega and... <laughs> Why do I feel cold all of a sudden? What's that? Oh. Oh no. Oh dear God! Now, I have no knowledge of the Megami Tensei or the Persona series, but my only known knowledge of the games are from the Him Daisy comic dub parody and the two Best Sisters Play LP videos. But I did play the actual game itself, and I can easily rank it as one of my most favorite puzzle games out there from the fun, intense, and admittedly frustrating gameplay to the engaging story and likable characters. And the theme of the story contains that makes you think even after finish playing the game. And since that themes alone shows up in the game's cover. Before we get to the cover, let's get to the plot of the game. The story is about Vincent, an indecisive bachelor who has an mm, alright five year long relationship with Catherine with a K, and she wants to take it up to the next level and get married. But Vincent, having difficulty to commit, kinda dodges the whole thing and instead just want to hit the pub titled The Stray Sheep, where he hangs out with his group of friends and get their buzz on. <laughs> Then later on that night, after his friends left, he confronts Catherine, with a C, a mysterious and banging lady of the night, who seems to have the same fears of commitment like him, and want to be free, thus leads to an affair that could have been easily solved by two of these, while in the meantime, he is suffering from some nightmares, where he plays a daily block puzzle game, along with a bunch of sheeps, some he may or may not be familiar with, as he climbs up the block towers to get to the goal, so he can survive another night and faces his fears of things that occur during his rather stressful week as the story progresses. 
That's pretty much the abridged version without revealing any spoilers of the story. Now, we get to the cover. Now, at face value, this is a rather tame, teasing image of the title character, Catherine, with a C, looking quite seductive, showing off her cleavage and staring straight at the gamer as the main protagonist, Vincent, is trapped between her cleavage, with anthropomorphic sheets falling to their doom. And now, I'm not gonna go all condescending or super douchey with heterosexist stuff like, ha ha ha, this is a type of cover that can make any horny teenage boy want to buy it. <laughs> You don't know if a lesbian or a bisexual chick might find this quite lovely. Besides, despite the outfit being a little silly looking like lingerie trying to come off as a dress, this outfit looks sexy and empowering to any woman. I mean, it's one of the popular choice of cosplay. I mean, do you want to look this sexy? I don't know, I'm asking you. I mean, comparing to the cover art advertisement of Soul Calibur 5, all you see is mostly tits, ass, and some dick. It really never tells me the game much, just a close-up shot of someone's tiggle bitties all on display, with a lack of creative background, and oh yeah, there's a game on a bottle of corn over there, I guess. <laughs> for a minute there, I thought this was an ad for a well-animated hentai or Queen's Blade. Then again, what's the difference? <laughs> But Atlas is different. Let's be frank with why they're awesome. Not only is Atlas smart, but they're sexy smart when it comes to storytelling and imagery, even from the seemingly simplest of cover arts. I also like the fact that not only is she cute and lovely, but there is something... off with her. Her hair, while unique and gravity defying, trust me, there is much, much crazier, they best represent her true nature. Based on the shape and angle, they look more like ram horns, especially with all those spirals within it, and her eyes scream seduction and complete control to not only our hero of the story, but the viewers themselves. She seemed to obviously be a more powerful being despite looking like a harmless seductress. But, let's not forget that within the story, she is also a sheep as well. Despite she claims she wants freedom, she is also a pawn to the real main antagonist of the game, Boss, who asked her to set this all up in the first place with most of the men in this city, resulting into nearly or completely ruin Vince's life, depending on your ending. Let's get back to spirals here in the background. On the surface is a solid pink background with a thin red outline, but up close they form various spirals all shaped as a heart. Spirals are a very meaningful symbol, best representing a downward spiral. Why do you think Hitchcock used that shape for the cover of his film Vertigo, or Junji Ito using it well in his horror manga series Uzumaki? I mean, is there anything more obvious than having a feeling of spinning or spiraling out of control without the actual spinning part? Spirals being a symbol works well for mystery and horror showing signs of said downward spiral and hypnosis, but another thing I find more impressive is that spirals has a third meaning, being the process of dialectic. Dialectic means the art of investigating or discussing the truth of opinions, which captures the story's element of mystery and views of the characters. Is there such thing as a woman's rap? Are we sheeps? Should we sell down? Or... Or... Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. Yeah, that's it. Is there any truth to any of the question the game asks of us, and even to Vincent? Is there a flaw or legit upside to these opinions? Should we form our own? Hell, Alan Moore, when he did The Watchmen, made the characters all have distinct worldviews without representing them all in the negative, positive light, or even being betrayed in the right. Moore even said that he doesn't even want anyone to agree with them. Just want you, the reader or viewer, to think and form their own opinions and possibly discuss it to themselves or others. So yeah, that's my full analysis and critique on why this cover art is actually more clever than I thought. There is also an alternate cover featuring Catherine with a K. Besides the cover showing off Catherine's character just from the more reserved laid down pose, the stuff in the cover is pretty much the same as I mentioned in the other one. Also, if I can make a negative critique, I hate the fact that some North American retailers had to make these alternate covers just a sense of the more sexual aspect of the cover, even though they're very tame in comparison to what we get in Rule 34. What? What the buck? <laughs> It's just what irritates me even more is that the only way they can pull it off is just a bad Photoshop crop job than say, I don't know, just start off from scratch and make an alternate cover art that lacks the tone of some of the sexy stuff, even though it's nothing really bad to begin with, but still maintain the great creativity in the art department. Thank you for enjoying my latest first ever take on doing my own cover art fail video review as a tribute slash take on Bleed 427 series. 
I love sexy cover art, but as long as they add some unique creative liberties than just pop on boobs and go on with their paycheck, I hope you the viewer will appreciate great work of art and think as deeply about it as I am. Later! You know, for a cover art fail, there's not a lot of fail, really.